Cochrane. Serving the island from Bembridge to the Needles and beyond. This is Vectis Radio. Uh, this is Vectis Radio. It's uh, Macker in the morning, and we've got uh, David Ike in and on. Hi, David. Hello, mate. It's nice to see you. You call everybody mate, do you? <laughs> I've noticed. Mate in the email, he called me mate out there. Do it's I great. Like no, it's like we're friends. All oh, right. Already. Yeah. No, well, so it's good. We be? No, absolutely. This absolutely. This is the first time I've been to uh, Newport Football Club without watching a match, actually. Is it? When was the last time you were here? Oh, I, I've been to a few mate games here, but... Uh, good game at the weekend. Was it? What's the score? 1-4-1, one, one, first game of the season against Forley Town. So all right. Big, you know, you're all right. It's well, only it's the good. first yeah. game. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me it's good, it's good. Yeah. I believe you. Yeah, they won last week as well and a week before that, two friendlies. No, they, they do say that this is the team that could get them out of this league, so fingers crossed that's, that's going to happen. Good luck to them. Yeah. Now, obviously, you were a footballer yourself. Yeah. Coventry City? Coventry City, yeah. Goalkeeper? Yeah, they used to call me Cinderella because I kept missing the ball. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> so what, what did you make of uh, our World Cup exploits? In, in, in uh, I, I didn't see a great deal of it, but uh, I thought it was pretty boring, really. Um, it's one or two games here and there, but much of it was pretty, you know, pedestrian, I thought. I must admit, I didn't watch much of it myself, because I didn't, you know, obviously because England weren't in it for that long. Uh, but uh, the, the football wasn't fantastic. I think in the past we've seen some brilliant World Cups, but uh, anyway, how, how did you get from, I mean, it, it, it's quite easy to see, you know, you're going from football to uh, being in a sports presenter because I mean that's what that's what sportsmen do now I mean Gary Lineker's done it and so many other people have done it but I, I don't get where you've gone from um, you know being a presenter to what you do now what what triggered that oh it's it's, it's a long story it take a couple of hours to go through it really oh, right. but uh, <laughs> amazing things happen in my life in the early 1990s um, uh, which basically um, broke the bubble if you like burst the bubble um, and I suddenly saw the world in a completely different way and uh, what has happened over the last 20 years is through extraordinary synchronicity of what people would call coincidence over and over again um, I've been to 50 countries over the last 20 years um, putting together a mass of inf interconnected information and connecting dots between on the face of it apparently unconnected people, organizations, events, countries, etc., to um, show that this world is actually controlled by a tiny few people compared with the population we're told is about 7 billion. And how it works is uh, very simple, because people say, how can a few control the world? How can a few control 7 billion? Well, quite straightforward if you've got the structure right. If you imagine a um, transnational corporation, it has a headquarters, it has a corporate policy, it's a corporate logo. And then in each country, it puts its subsidiaries. And they run exactly to the same blueprint, same corporate policy, dictated from the center. Well, that's how this network of interbreeding families comes from that actually are controlling the banking system, the political system, uh, the oil cartels, the pharmaceutical cartels, uh, the global media, mainstream media. Um, you have the centre, and it's in Europe, a lot of it's in London, not the government of London, the centre of this web, the secret society web in the city of London and the temple and all around there. And then in each country there is a network of secret societies that um, are answerable to the, the center, the spider as I call it, in, in Europe. And so the spider sends out the agenda for the world, which is based on more and more and more centralization of power in every area of our lives, fewer and fewer banks, bigger and bigger banks, taking uh, political power from communities, first of all to, to, to national government and then through that now to um, European government dictatorship and they, what they want is a world government eventually dictating from a centre to everyone on the planet. And the role, the job of these networks in the individual countries um, is to change that country's society and structure in line with the centrally dictated blueprint. This is why when I've been to these 50 countries over and over again, Ian, I keep seeing the same things happening in, in, in country after country justified by the same excuses. And if you want to bring it to the Isle of Wight, which we, we do, these national networks then have their subsidiaries in the communities of the country. And those networks are answerable to the national network, which is answerable to the global network. And through this system, 
of interconnected uh, secret societies, the web, the center, the global center, can manipulate right down through into, into a local community like the Isle of Wight. And what I find wherever I go, because of the structure I've just described, is what I call the blueprint. So when I go anywhere and people start telling me about their experiences of corruption and manipulation and uh, secret societies and Freemason manipulation, uh, pedophile manipulation and satanic uh, ritual uh, manipulation, although they give me different names and different situations, as soon as they start talking, I know what they're going to tell me. I was at a uh, a rally in Trafalgar Square speaking at, on Saturday, uh, a rally against child abuse and, and, and social services stealing children from loving parents, which is an epidemic, by the way, in this country, uh, not, not least on the Isle of Wight. Um, and people from all over the country were at that rally, from Scotland all over, and as soon as they started talking and telling me their story, I knew what was coming, and every time it was the same. And so when you get down here to the Isle of Wight, the Isle of Wight branch, if you like, you have a network of Freemasons and people, members of other secret societies, but the membership, if you want to call it that, of Freemasonry per head of population on the Isle of Wight is staggering. There was a book a few years ago called Inside the Brotherhood, which featured at one point the Isle of Wight, and it said that uh, one, around one at that time, one in 27 males on the Isle of Wight was a, a, a Freemason, if you take the whole male population. If you take out the male population in the prisons, up the road from here, mm -hmm. you take out the male population that Freemasons wouldn't be interested in, they estimated it that about one in ten males on the Isle of Wight are Freemasons. And so you've got the Freemasons, you've got the satanic group, and I'm talking literally about literally sacrificing people. People find it very hard to take that on board. They think, oh, no, that was way past history. The, the primitives did that. They're still doing it. And the pedophiles, and these rings connect into each other. And what it means is, for instance, say, say, say you, are, um, you want to take uh, a child from a loving parent. Um, and do you know there are financial incentives for social services in this country to meet targets of taking children from parents surely it's got to be done on the basis of uh, is the child in danger never mind incentives to take as many as we can but that's what's happening and not only that Ian it's not only money or it's, ma it's massively that it's also that a lot of these kids um, nothing like all no but a lot of these kids end up uh, being farmed out into these pedophile and satanic uh, rings so you want to take a child from a loving mother one of the ring within social services goes along and says we think your child's in danger we think you the mother or you the father have a split personality uh, and are a danger to the, to, to the mother what they and the mother goes what are you talking about uh, i'm nothing wrong with this so they, then they pull out and I, I i'm not just telling one story here ian I've, I've been on this all over the country indeed all over the world it happens massively in america for a long time i've heard these stories repeated over and over and over again so they then pull out um an off the peg out the cupboard psychologist psychiatrist who's connected and they then decide sometimes having never met the mother or child by the way that actually social services are right so the child's taken away then the lawyers barristers on our on on our dollar uh, the taxpayer then go to court and in league with judges who are part of the ring uh, barristers and lawyers that are part of the ring uh, social services people who are part of the ring and i'm not saying all these people who are in those jobs are like that. I'm saying that if you want to take a child away, you make sure the people involved in this case are, are those people, and they take the child away from, from the loving mother. And as uh, people like Christopher Booker have reported in the Sunday Telegraph and the Daily Mail, although these um, family courts are strictly secret, and you can go to jail if you actually give details of these cases, that's why people don't hear about them, He's told stories, and I've had stories told to me by these uh, people, where they're in court, they're distraught, doting, loving parents, and the judge has just decided their child is going to be taken away, given to foster care, and then adopted, and the child doesn't want to go. And in the court, the social workers and the legal team are high bloody fiving at another victory. Um, and this is possible. It, it's possible, for instance, to... Um, 
control a council if you have your people in the different political parties, if you have y your people as officers of the council, as um, uh, lawyers of the council. Because on this island, as with everywhere else, the elected officials don't run the Isle of Wight. They don't run the county council. The unelected, appointed, vastly paid lawyers and, un, um, and appointed officers control the council. And as a result of being here since 1982, particularly since I became known for investigating such things in the last 20 years, I have compiled uh, a, a great deal of, of information, more and more all the time, about how this um, island is controlled by the most unbelievably corrupt, soulless, heartless band of criminals uh, who are controlling the council, they're controlling social services, they're controlling uh, the, the business community, etc., uh, 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 etc. Et and uh, it, a lot of it, in fact, overwhelmingly, it is based on the staggering amount of drugs that are landed on the Isle of Wight every year and passed through to the mainland uh, and all the drug money laundering and, and all the other stuff that goes on with it. I, I've got an article on my website, davidike.com. It's called Isle of Wight, Nice Place, Shame About the Cesspit. And the cesspit is um, the Isle of Wight uh, Mafia. And uh, there's an email address on the website, whitemafia at aol.com, where people can tell me in the strictest confidence of their experiences of this mob. I'm guessing you've got evidence? Well, the thing is that what makes it uh, difficult is um, in terms of naming the people who've given me this information is they're terrified of the mob you know when you're dealing with and so it's given to me in the strictest confidence and that's the only reason they'll talk to me but when after uh, all these years that I've been on the Isle of Wight since 82 and even more so like I say in the last 20 years even more so in the last few years when different people keep telling you exactly the same story and I've had some stories straight out of the blueprint to that email address since it went up 10 days ago like the guy the guy who um uh his, his, his father was a, a high freemason on the isle of Wight, he told me and when his father died um he was asked to take his place he refused he said i want nothing to do with the freemasons thank you very much i just want to get on with my life he had a good business thriving business family kids home everything and one of the freemasons or a few of them said to him you know if you don't join us, you know, you, you're going to be in trouble. I mean, you, you, you know, you need to join us or, you know, I can't speak for what's going to happen, basically. He said, I don't want to get involved in the Freemasons. I want to get on with my life. Well, when he'd lost his business, because people were pulling out of working with it and, and contracts with it, when he lost his, 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 his family, his children and his home, one of them said to him, you see what happens if you don't join us. And I've had this story told to me over and over again. And a lot of it, a lot of it surrounds um, a, a network of corrupt lawyers. Now, I can tell you this from long experience and talking to so many people on the island. If you want to find a corrupt lawyer, then just swing a cat in Newport and swing a cat in ride and you're bound to hit one because you know people um, Ian who are streetwise to this who I've met when they have a, a legal situation on the Isle of Wight they go to the mainland for their lawyer or barrister they won't touch anybody here and I tell you barristers and lawyers on the on, on the mainland in the in the southern area they know how corrupt this bloody place is uh, and um, so the only uh, the only guy I've ever come across there will be others but the only one I've come across is a guy called Jim Thorne works out of Ventnor he does stuff for me when I, I need legal help he is a decent honest straight guy um, ask me for another and I'm struggling there will be them but the ones I've come across you wouldn't trust to tell you the time in a room full of clocks okay, I must admit I, 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 there are We've had numerous phone-ins over the last couple of weeks where people have actually stated that, you know, that the people that are running the country are barristers, and uh, I'm guessing that they're in the, 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 the ring that you talk of. Well, this is interesting, uh, 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 Ian, because, yes, r running the country, right? But because of the blueprint that I'm talking about, the web, which each level is a mirror of the, of the, of the top level, works in the same way, that's why uh, the lawyers are running the Isle of Wight and the appointed people. As we know, the appointed people and the lawyers run the government and, 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 and also the shadow.